Hello and welcome to the very special edition of Wrestling in Mom's Basement. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This guy to my right did it for The Rock. He did for the people, and he did it for The Rock again. Joe Venuto. Hello. So, and, so uh, Joe, what's the special episode we have for them today? This is the first annual WWE this year. It'll probably be WWE in New Japan next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we really have to invest in New Japan World. Yeah, I know. It's only like nine bucks. Yeah, I know. Something cheap. Well, I pay for them. <laughs> well, no, it's not me. They don't have an app. They really need an app. They have one on Amazon TV, but we don't have Amazon it's on TV. TV. So. Yeah, uh, Mark Cuban. I know he's got. He's trying to make Axe TV bigger, but still have Axe TV. Yeah, so. They don't make it. Make them. They don't mind to make an app. Exactly. They probably don't need your money. Just make them an app. Yeah. Uh, these are the first annual WWE Wrestle and Mom's Basement Awards. The Wimbies, if you will. Right for WIMD. If you try and figure out why, Wimbies. Yes. Uh, yes. Why? Why? Uh, why? Yes. Uh, the Wimbs. The Wimbies. Wimbies. Uh, I like the Wimbies better. Ah. Uh, Emmys. Yes. Grannies. I don't know why they call the Academy Awards Oscars, but they do. The, the Grannies. The uh, Grammys. The, uh... Yeah, Golden the Globes. Globes. Uh, we should get a trophy made next year for it. Yes. Uh, we can start giving people that laid up Santa, Santa Claus over there. Uh, not the one with the hand in his pants. This is a small one. It's and no, no, well, the one with the hand in his pants he doesn't even have his hand in his pants. Yeah, I know. How this, well, at this point, how they season wants to show. I know. His face. Ah. I know. Right. It's not Christmas without a perverted Santa Claus. Ah, uh, these are in 2017. If you're wondering what your these are for, or worse. Uh I did put some. I did go through. I did have some of my past winners listed for some of these awards. I used to. We just used to do it private. Yes. Ah, uh, so I do have some of my past winners listed. I found this computer too. So. You know, I've, you know this computer from 2012, I found some of my awards from 2009. <laughs> in, my, okay. in, my email, in my old in my old email stuff. Okay. I, so I had to go for him, so it was... Uh, I don't have such a record, so... Alright. He, he, you might remember he picked for a couple of them. Probably not. For wrestler of the year, probably. That's probably the easiest one. Or, yeah, it's very easy. Like, the last ten, last ten years, the wrestlers are practically the same. Uh, but these are for 2017. Uh, but these are the awards where we honor the hard-working men and women <laughs> of the WWE. Yep. Uh, based on their work over the last 12 months. And it's pretty much WWE because we don't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. Well, we, we like, we skim from it. We we we're, pre we're pretty much casual fans for both Ring of Honor and New Japan. Right, but New Japan is my New Year's resolution. When and this year we haven't watched any of Weech on the Ground either. Yeah. I don't think it's on Netflix show either. She's the first show. Yeah. Uh, New Ring of Honor is first show. I only went to one Ring of Honor show this year, last year. Uh, I said the three that they had here. Yeah. Who the hell does shows on the other side? Uh, uh, and then the other one Schedule conflict with yeah. the other Ring of Honor. Yeah, it just happened right around Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then New Japan is my goal, though, to get into. I have more invested in them. Well, I don't have nothing invested in them in terms of me personally. <laughs> yeah, and for New Japan, it was like Wrestle Kingdom. Right. And then, like, a few matches here and there. Yeah, but starting this week, I do want to get, I do want to get into New Japan where fully with Wrestle Kingdom 12 yeah. happened on yeah. Thursday. I know that, so... Which, uh, if we're lucky, I can find a good video on, like, Daily Motion or some other... We might be able to get a review on so. Friday. Yeah. yeah, we might try to do a review for Russell King. On so. Friday. Or not on one of upcoming There's weeks. no promises, but it, yeah. it's also a special one. I'll have the Axe TV special at least on Saturday for the yes. main matches. I I cover next in the following week's podcast. Uh, but New Japan is my goal to get into this year. Ring of Honor, it'll probably still be casual. House Parkour, but like, that's, that's, that doesn't really count. Because yeah. they're, they run there so spiritually. There's, there's not like a lot of storylines to follow. Unless yeah. there's Tommy Dreamer feeling with Johnny Mercury. It's really not a serial yeah. show. Yeah, though they are doing a television championship. Yeah. At the House Parkour in Philly's in Rumble Weekend, so. 
There's that. Uh, these are the very prestigious awards for wrestling. Um, yes, these the are most big... prestigious awards ever in wrestling. These are bigger than the Observer Awards because they, for some reason they include MMA in theirs. So I only count theirs as important. Just for that reason alone. Well, why would you include MMA in it? Yeah, it's uh, not... Yeah, there, there's one that's a scripted sport. Yeah. And the other one's wrestling. Right. Uh... Uh, we probably just pissed off a whole lot of MMA fans. Oh, uh, go f- myself. Um, sorry. It's your own fault for paying $60 and for a match of, uh, for a fight that might end up only being two minutes. Yeah. See, I'm hungry. Uh, two minutes and 15 seconds. That gives and Stephanie me. would remind us. Uh, so what's two minutes? Okay. Yes. I thought I'd like giving too much time. Yes. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, side note real quick. We're filming this on Tuesday night for SmackDown and told us on top of my life. Uh, real quick though, they find out earlier today on Tuesday that CM Punk Pipe Bomb is nominated for w- by WWE for the top 25 greatest for all moments yeah. you can vote on W.com. So it's just a sign number 30 in the room. Um, you heard it here, folks. You're right. Joe is making... Oh wait, maybe I should save that for my bold, for the bold predictions yes. podcast on yes. Friday. The, the only award we're not going to do today is best match. Is best match because we're actually going to make a longer list. Oh, our top ten nominated will end up being twenty matches of twenty seventeen. And well, then we can do top twenty. Uh, all right, then we'll do our I top. Probably 20. do top twenty. I it, top twenty don't even matches to be fair. Maybe Kano, maybe uh, Okada in there somewhere. <laughs> matches yeah. of twenty seventeen. And any of the three we recommend. Right. So or Okada and Omega. Yeah, I think I like the what was it the Dominion one. Um, yeah, the second, second one better. Yeah. I know that's the unpopular pain, but yeah. Uh, but like I said, these are the most prestigious awards in wrestling. Uh, just a few days before it begins, let's make sure I wrap for everything. Every award is based off the stuff from January 1st, 2017, through the end of December. No start midway through or anything like that. Uh, this is WWE only, like we said. It'll say in Title 2 on YouTube, so just in case you know. Uh, so if you raise in the comment section on Twitter, why does New Japan ring on or Impact uh, or anything else in there is WWE only. Though I'll give you a hand, I did seriously considered Impact for the very first word on the night. Uh, the JTJ award, <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I rest my case. It is like to be fair. Yes. Uh, the wars are based on our own personal choices. We don't know what, either one pot. Yeah. Obviously, there was no polls or writing votes from any things. We're yes. just, just, just our awards. Yeah, uh, our names on the awards, so we get to pick the winners. That's the way it goes. Not to sound mean, just that's the way it goes. We we do have two separate winners, just to yeah. clarify and keep conclusion. Uh, we I, we don't expect anybody to agree. I I don't, I don't expect anybody to agree with everything I say no. in this video. Uh, no. But I am going to do my best to explain all my choices. I, I don't know how Pat awarded them. I award them based on performance. It doesn't actually matter if person wins older matches for me on television and titles really aren't that important in terms of that. It's not the performance for me more than anything else. Uh, regarding NXT, WWE's third brand is included in a reward as well. The NXT because brand is, NXT is WWE. Right, X, not, not according to my call, but whatever. The NXT brand is also, um, obviously I'm not going to, we're not going to ignore the same goes for 205 Live, not the yes. also part, but as part of the I'm not going to ignore it. Uh, the May Young Classic and WWE's UK brand, and I really got going. Uh, anything is WWE's concerned for these wars. Uh, and I'll just to remember is I do, tr- uh, I, we try to have fun when we're talking about the wrestling, we don't take it too seriously. Mm-hmm. And I don't take myself too seriously or at all. So, yeah. if you disagree with yourself, it's cool. Uh, just keep it civil down below in the comments yeah. for any younger audience members. Uh, yeah. If you want to don't put be, up your suggestions for these awards, don't be shy to all for your team. Yeah, yeah, that's my next one. Like that. Uh, so it's, that, that's going to be like somewhere in trial year because it covers just about everything. So, so first up, the the JTG that person still works in WWE War. I was originally going to name the JTG per, that company still in. This is a war, but. Uh, <laughs> Actually, and Impact will just win it every year. They're still yeah, alive. Yeah, so we don't want them to. And knowing them, they could go a thousand years. Right. And not actually be profitable whatsoever. That's true. So, I mean, those damn cockroaches. Uh, so, we'll start off with the JTG person, Source and WWE. All right. My my pick for winner of the JTG award 
is Alicia Fox. Being that she's been there for nine years. Ten. Ten years. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve <laughs> years. Which is right, right. To her fucking credit, she, she's a lie. Which, that is very amazing for a woman's roster. Yes. <laughs> she's been there for twelve years. <laughs> Skirt at the bottom of the roster the entire freaking time. She was at the top of the division for like three months at one point, or two months. I think it was like a month. <laughs> I, I, I think you gave that gave her too much time at the top of the division. I think no, it was like a month. No, she lost at SummerSlam, right? The championship. Yeah. She was she was the champ for two months then. Okay, two months. It was the Divas title that was the butterfly belt. So, it's more prestigious than the two that we got going on now. Some old time Greece have held that belt. Beth Phoenix, well, Natalia, anyway, Michelle, AJ, minus two, Caitlin, mo- minus two months over 12 years, she has skirted Eat. the bottom of the card literally the entire time. I'm actually still amazed she still has a job with WWE. I'm not sure why she's still there. I think, I think she has something on Vince or Stephanie, or Vince and Stephanie. Uh, I think it's because. So, my pick for this award is Alicia Fox. She's decent. And making her opponents look good. But she could almost kill herself and her opponents. <laughs> at the same time. And she has an impressive normal like, suplex set. Nobody can deny that. That's well, no reason why she might still be hired. Okay, she's got one move. The total rolls like two. <laughs> she's been working for 12 years. She's got one good move. The total rolls like two. I always get impressed by how, she, how strong she All is. Alright, fine. The sit next can... Is hit and miss. Yeah. Some mostly miss. Okay, she's got so one think, good move, one decent move, and one move that could be good, but she barely hits. Right. After 12 years. <laughs> that is why she's my pick for the award. More than Rose of this ever had. Yes. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't put Dana. Dana just got there. Oh, okay. I, it was literally down to her, Dana, but Alicia has 12 years to Dana's like four. Well, I want NXT for this one. And Meal. Because his fiance is killing it on the main roster. I forgot, just based off of previous Attila Divas at this show, that he was still there. Uh, I'm down with Buddy Murphy. Or Murphy. Uh. He is a former RC tag team champion now with Weston Blake. And they had Alexa as the manager. The group ended, I believe, once in like May of 2016. Boyce went on to the roster a few months later, and Murphy hasn't done much since. Uh, neither has Blake, really. Uh, but I'm only picking one person. Uh, Murphy's greatest claim to Dutty fame might be that he's engaged to Alexa Bliss. Yes. Uh, I'm sure a lot of male viewers will hate him for that. Uh, I'm not. He's got, heat, he's got heat for me for an important. I'm not saying he should lose his job. That's not what this award's about. No. It's just a, you still have a job? <laughs> right. Because they have nothing for him. Uh, here, hire who you want, I mean, that, that's your money. It's just where people want to use in such a long time. I believe, I believe the tagline you came up for himself is the NXT's best kept secret. But that's I good. Be, I believe that's... Well, that's a good, that sounds like a good gimmick on paper if he wasn't such a secret. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh. if, he was, if he wasn't such a secret... For like house shows, for yeah, yeah, too. Right. Uh up next, most poorly used performer. This is going throughout the year, right? Right. All right. So my pick from January to December of 2017 for the most poorly used performer is Dolph Ziggler. Uh, just because they really they really struggled to find something for him throughout the year. And it, and literally, they gave him the title at the last. Gave, they gave him the United States title in the last month of the year. <laughs> like they just found something for due to him two weeks before the year ended. So my pick is going to be Dolph Ziggler. Uh, for me, also on SmackDown, uh, this is where I do from April to December ago. Ty Dillinger. Uh, and there there are some people that could have been chosen here, uh, but. I still like he came out of the NXT with so much of men. So maybe it's time to turn a heel, which I actually covered in the news story on Monday that they've been testing a heel turn with him on house shows recently. With uh, the fans, I think it was with Sankar. Uh, the fans were shooting 10 at him and he was shutting them up. So, not saying something on TV anytime soon, like I covered, but uh, 
Maybe it's time to turn him heel to see how he does in that role. Hmm. Uh, I'm next best theme song. Uh, I'm, I'm, I chose this word because it of uh, theme songs that came out just last year. Uh, and, I would, I, if I didn't clarify, that could have been for any. Yeah, yeah like, but, but just how I chose it was that it was just for last year, and there's one that really came out from in my head that uh, that really just sounds different than anyone else's, and uh, I'm actually going to give it to uh, Baron Corbin's new theme. Okay, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it's, 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 it's Jim Joss's it's, last theme. Yeah, I'm going to actually give it to him because Corbin's it just case. sounds different than anybody else. Because Corbin has good yeah. taste in Universal themes. He won Jim Johnson, but... Which, ironically, my pick is actually CFO Sulk. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, uh, it's actually my the second year in a row. Jim Johnson actually knew what a bridge was. They were CFOs. Yeah. Uh, that I could agree with. Uh, my best theme song is actually my second year in a row for this award for me. Uh, Bobby Roode. Uh, I do love the Glory yeah. Sulk. Yeah. As much as they don't have a bridge, their songs are kind of catchy, yes. Yeah. Like uh, Nora's, AJ's, Bobby's. Um, uh, next best WWE Network original show. Not counting NXT or 205, 205 Live or what have you. Uh, it's pretty much just like specials or a uh, ride along. All right. All right, so my pick for this, uh, just because just I, f- I found out, I think more from this uh, thing on the WWE Network than, any, than anything else. Uh, just new information was uh, Trailblazer, which was Alondra Blaze's oh, uh, special on the WWE Network. We found out that, about the story of how she left WWE, uh, why Vince McMahon was so, was so angry at her for so long, and sort of about Alondra Blaze's life as well. No. So I'm gonna choose that. Uh, I did choose a documentary style programming, but I chose WWE Network's documentary show, uh, WWE 24. Uh, there's not much else to make there, because WWE cut back on a lot of fresh series this year. Yeah, they did. Uh, they are bringing some new series, so this year, so far, with a Corey Graves new show, Straight to the Source, and a new show debuted at a role called WWE Photo Shoot. Yeah. Uh, I think they try force the best because they focus on single talk big in a documentary role and I haven't seen them produce a bad one yet. Although they did produce a confusing one with the women's revolution two years ago. No, I'll, I'll actually just flat out say that's bad. Okay, it was bad. <laughs> it was an like all hill stuffy. Yeah. Uh, and just very, very muddled and uh, I'm trying to look for the right word here, just Revisionist Frank. history, almost, yeah. by WWE. This year, I particularly enjoyed episodes on uh, Kurt Angle and Finn Balor this year. Yeah. Goldberg had one this year. Uh, WrestleMania 32 uh, had one. Uh, best announcer. Best announcer? Uh, I don't think I actually got that one. But, uh, but I do have a pick in mind anyway. Uh, I'm going to go with Corey Graves for WWE. Uh, he's been the most consistent on the main roster. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, Morrow had a leave of absence for about the year. So I'm going to give it to Corey Graves because he was the best announcer for the whole year. Uh, I'm going to prove that Corey Graves to be meeting in three weeks. Yes. Four weeks. Four, uh, four and a half, three and a half weeks. I'll be meeting him because I need some tips. Ah, uh, I think he's the best color analyst. They got while Morrow is the best play-by-play guy. Yeah. Ideally, they should be a two-man team on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, but it's not going to happen. Ah, uh, because of this and Morrow. Yes. Ah, uh, best finishing move. Uh, I, I, th- I think we actually chose the same one. Uh, and just because I agree with it, and because it's just a, such an ending to a match that brings it to a nice climax. I'm actually going to get it to the Eclipse. I want the Eclipse by Ember Moon as well. Uh, I've always been a fan of the Stunner by Color RKO yeah. style move. So Ember Moon going to start with the top rope and press to the Uh Best non-wrestler. Uh, Paul Heyman. Uh, it's only three people. 
Oh, yeah, Heyman normally is the one that wins it. And, yeah, so I agree there, Paul Heyman. Uh, Heyman has a lot on this war even as a part-timer. The only people I can think of being close to him are Renee Young and Maurice. I will also actually give an, also give an honorable nod to uh, Zelina Vega. I think mean, that's what Sean said. Yeah, but yeah. it's her work just from, like, all gets on. Yeah. Uh, so, uh... Maurice is fantastic if the manager Miz, uh, but she's calling out because she is not having a baby. Uh, stupidest booking decision. Uh, I, I know you said decision, uh, but seriously, making a booking decision also includes a match. No. So I'm going to go with the specific match type okay. that happened this year, and I'm going to go with House of Horrors. <laughs> it should be self obvious at uh, this point. Actually, no, that's even worse then. <laughs> Why I put uh, I because I just went straight for decision and we should have a whole one day championship. But I'll happily sit for that six months again. Yes. Over that one over that one match. Uh but Jinder only had like what two good bad matches? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh I I want to mention this layer is a bad idea. Uh there's gonna be more gender layer, believe it. Uh but if they built him up more than maybe General Hall will have gone over his current champion. Yes. I thought it was maybe that didn't boost W business in India because they canceled one or two. How shows zero do this lift sales? The whole main event also did her strength this year. Uh the best crowd. Uh I'm actually going to give it to Orlando, believe it or not. Um uh, for me it was down between Brooklyn and Orlando. And Orlando didn't have beach balls from my recollection. I'm down for best crowd, specifically Orlando, the rule at the WrestleMania. Yes. Uh, Exact one. Uh, there was a Sam Crowder sister's just rolling to WrestleMania in Orlando. The way they boob room arranged for like 10 minutes to start the show was very memorable. Yes. Uh, the best WWE TV show? Uh, NXT. NXT. I want to explain. I'll just tell you the order I had them in. That would be NXT SmackDown Roll 2 if I'm alive. Yes. That would be the order. NXT is just at a higher level, a lot more con consistently than that, you know, all the other shows, so. Since I wrote a lot about this actual war, I did put that with the main words, but the the KTF award and the wise I came up with the knock the fuck out award. Um I I, I guess it's This is this could give it to a per no, it's fine. Give, we give it to like a person or a thing that deserves to be knocked the fuck out. Uh, well, and I actually put some people down that I you know I've never did this award before. Some people I will have knocked the fuck out over the years. <laughs> You don't mind, real quick. <laughs> yeah. In 2009, Michael Cole. <laughs> In 2010, the anonymous GM Hangle. Yes. 2011, Michael Cole. 2012, Table. He was just still that by that point. Yeah. 2013, the Great Collie. I couldn't think of nobody for 2013. <laughs> 2014, the Bunny and Ambrose. 2015, the WWE Creative Team. <laughs> That's an easy one. I right, 2016. That, that could normally be any year, to be honest. And 2016, Vince McMahon lockbox storyline with Shane McMahon. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right, my pick for this year. I'm surprised you didn't leave Vince Russo in that. My pick for this year. I want to knock him the fuck out from 2009, 2016. Huh. They were all years I wanted. He wasn't involved in wrestling. I don't know. He's, I don't know. He's, I, I know you just hate him. Though. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, anyway, my pick for this year is going to be Enzo Amore. Okay. Uh, just his long-winded promos where he can be good on the mic. It's just his long-winded promos just keep him around and you're just sitting there watching him. Yeah, bored, he's really gone boring, yeah. boring. That and he also made the dumb decision of cheating on Liv Morgan. Right. With a beautiful stripper. Yeah. Did you see why he his signature too on his driver's license? Yeah, it was a dick. Yeah, uh, so Enzo, does a great you, my friend, deserve to get knocked the fuck out. I'm not going with an individual person this year. I'm going to go with the creative team, but not the creative team directly. More of their idea of over scripting promos. Yeah. And Pat knows this has been a big beef. Big oh yeah. This year, I love last year around specifically. Ah. Uh, I know it's not an individual person, like I said, but when it comes to what frustrates me most right now about WWE is the promos. Uh, for whatever reason, I use creative team since I really little trust in her talent to deliver meaningful promos, unless you like some other joke. Uh, because they make the most of us, they make most of wrestlers, keyword or most, memorize everything we're for. Yeah. The most cringe worth promos for me now are usually from Bailey yeah. or Sasha, who were never that bad at talking, I see. They, they've seemed to get Roman down pat this year. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, but yeah, Bailey and Sasha are especially cringy. cringy. Uh, and they were never at Bay NXT. Oh no, no. So I'm not even blaming them. <laughs> specifically here. Both can be both can be actually excellent in the mic. Yeah. Uh, specifically Bailey Sasha. came off as a great face in NXT. And Sasha, Sasha came off as, as, the bo- as a boss character. Yeah. Like on the main roster, it's not even in Rinch Song. It's, it's specifically weird when they do backstage segments together. Yeah. <laughs> Look. Like hate to tell, like hate to tell and remember that, but I like when they talk backstage. I just actually 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 go for like a woman on the main roster, <laughs> just about besides it like Alexa or Mickey or Oscar. Like I find myself asking like what person, what normal person talks like that. <laughs> yeah, this week was uh, Kane and Braun Strowman with the Alpha Monsters. They've been destroying each other slowly, granted, for weeks. But they've been destroying each other for weeks. Then they're having a civil conversation backstage. Kane's sitting chilling in the corner. I won't get too much into it because I'll be on the world review over the weekend. But then Kane's the this forced line of alpha monsters. Yeah. Who the hell talks like that? Yeah. Uh, every single woman, though, is like. I, I do question myself. Uh, yeah. Charlotte's got more control. Like, seriously, the only woman to call it natural Alexa, Mickey, Asuka, and Becky. And Charlotte's getting a little better. I need to tweet this at Clash of Champions when they interview Naomi on the kickoff. Naomi does not talk like that! <laughs> like, the stuff she would say, okay, I get it. How do I say that I'll come off as racist? But it's like, they think it's like culturally cool. I think when they write it. Yeah. But Naomi does not talk like that at all. I hugged a woman. I had a little conversation with her. Actually, I watched her on Total Divas. She She's does, not like that at all. I hugged that woman. She she does not talk like that on Total Divas. <laughs> and, well, Lana don't talk like that on Total Divas either, but I wish she did. <laughs> yeah. That was a different story. My God. Uh, wait, I got more. Uh, no one's going to change when we complain about this. Uh, no one's trying to. And I actually remember. Remember I got a night out at WWE Magazine and the Roll Magazine, like 2002, 2003. This is from when we were saying, ah. Uh, that was the role of SmackDown magazines at the time. SmackDown took the place of the WWE magazine. Yeah. That was the KFA magazine, WWE. But Roll was an inscriptive one. And even during the brand split, SmackDown was still KFA, but Roll was still inscriptive though, because it was still Roll magazine. I remember Steve Austin, he did an interview in like 2002, 2003, I can't remember. Yes, I used to read the interviews back when I was younger. I'm weird. Um, they turned us in our own role magazine with him complaining about writer telling what to say back then. Ah, uh, that was 15 years ago, about, so it's only getting worse since. Yes. That, uh, all I'm asking is for WWE, please show more faith in their talent. Uh, I understand the need for Warrior Sony and Rome. I mean, they, they try to do the script itself, get the talent, bowl points, and uh, tell them and trust them to deliver what it matters most. The wrestlers don't kind of better than the Warriors. Uh, let them show us. Um, now, I'll stop, I'll stop this video here for yeah, it's, it's a nice Wars. stopping point, yeah. Then we'll get into the main wars where we kick off with Part two. the most horrible moment of the year. Yep. Well, I only had I two. I wonder what it will be. I wonder if I only had two. <laughs> so, I, I can think of a lot of memorable moments. Yeah, were, just keep it even with yeah, the I skipped it. I never, I, I, I never done two. All right, we'll see you for the major ones. Bye. See you then.